morning, Algonquin. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good Wednesday morning, Algonquin. It's Wednesday, June 3rd, and here are your announcements. Again, today, Coding Club with Mrs. Ekstrom from 2.30 to 3.15. This last Coding Club will meet on Google Meet, so please join Mrs. Ekstrom uh, for, at 2.30. We will work on Scratch and Breakout EDU. Email Mrs. Ekstrom if you would like to come, and she will give you the link to the meet. AMS students and teachers are welcome. Coming up tomorrow, it's Throwback Thursday, and we're going to have a special event from earlier in the school year to highlight for everybody. Also a reminder that Friday is Richtel's Read All Day, so we'll have some special Wham! announcements. So I'll make it a special edition of Wham! And we're asking that you send in your photos of you reading out there, reading all day, coming up on Friday, June 5th, hashtag AMSRRAD. Ms. Wright and the Best Buddies group want to remind you that they have a meeting coming up on Friday at 3 p.m. They're going to be joining the high school crew for a special Kahoot game. Also a reminder that coming up on Tuesday the 16th, it's the AMS Send-Off Parade. Your chance to say goodbye to your faculty and staff as we finish out a great school year. Wear blue and gold, decorate your car, and make a sign if you'd like. We'll see you in front of Algonquin on Tuesday, June 16th. Here's the map of how you're going to travel in off of the 351 entrance and head out onto Route 66 at the conclusion of the event. It'll be a great time. Hope to see you there. Hey, Algonquin, what you reading? Today we have a special Netflix edition from Mrs. Ekstrom. Hey, Algonquin, Mrs. Ekstrom here with a what you reading, nailed it edition. What am I baking? I mean, what am I reading today? So I read Sasquatch by Roland Smith. It was awesome. It had suspense, mystery, and potential Sasquatch encounters. Dylan's mom heads to Egypt for work, leaves him alone with his dad, who's distracted and spends lots of time in the garage rooting around. Dad decides this is the perfect time to go on a Sasquatch hunting expedition because Dylan's mom would not approve. The team's members have a goal to bring back a dead Sasquatch, and Dylan tags along to try to prevent this. Oh, and did I mention the expedition is headed up to Mount St. Helens, and the timing is perfect for the volcano to explode? Dylan decides to follow his dad on the trip with the help of Mr. Johnson, a field biologist. Dylan may regret his decision because, number one, it appears someone is tailing Mr. Johnson, Number two, Dylan has major worries about the guys on the team. And number three, and did I mention the volcano is due to erupt? I loved this book. It had action, suspense, and humor. So in honor of the Sasquatch book, I decided in the spirit of the popular Netflix baking show Nailed It, that I would make something related to the book. So I found some little monster kind of inspired snacks. And I don't know, what do you think? Did I nail it? I don't know. I think I did a pretty good job there. So that was some fun. So I recommend reading similar books on Sora. If you just search the keyword monsters, you'll find books on ocean monsters, sea monsters, Rick Riordan books as well and a drawing book on monsters that is always available. You can also check out these other books by Roland Smith on Sora. Remember, you don't need any password. You just log in through your Google account and keep reading. Thanks for watching. Well, that was pretty cool. Now for Mrs. Reinish's quote of the day. Positivity always wins. Always. We have a number of birthdays to recognize today, not only those folks for today, but then in the coming days as we have our special WAM announcements on Thursday and Friday this week. So happy birthday today to Alexa and Mariah. Coming up on Thursday, Kevin, Benjamin, Megan, and Ethan. And on Friday, Bear and Gianna. Saturday, Omaji, Luke, Miss Gully, and Miss La Chapelle. And on Sunday, Teddy, Lila, and McAlina. Have a great day, guys.
Copy and a warrior today, Miss Mallory, who is celebrating the birth of a new grandson. Happy birthday to that little guy and copy and a warrior for Mrs. Mallory. And remember, a school is not just a place. Make it a great day, warriors. And we leave you with one final edition of our One School, One Book, posted with Mrs. McGill. Good morning, AMS, and welcome to the final session of your posted reboot. I hope you were all ready for last week's challenge to read and savor the last four chapters of Posted. If you recall, dear reader, Frost's mom gives him some sage advice about starting the school year at a new school. Don't worry, she tells Frost. You find your people and you find your tribe. And that he does. In chapter 18, the message, it begins with the tribe celebrating Rose's victory. The tribe has changed over the course of the story and the reader will gain some insights into how these changes will impact everyone. Cameron holds up his end of the bet and wears the sticky note all day. He then gives the note to Dee Dee. It reads, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, this positive event is overshadowed by the message written in Sharpie on Wolf's Locker. Wolf's reaction tells the reader that what is written is pretty horrible, and Wolf lashes out at Bench, believing he is the culprit. The tribe understands what words can do. So in a desperate attempt to help Wolf, the tribe leaves school. In the confession, Dee Dee and Rose stay with Wolf, and Frost goes in search of Bench. The two friends get into a heated argument. But in the end, Frost believes Bench when he says it wasn't him who wrote on Wolf's locker. And as a matter of fact, Bench knows who it was. Once he swears Frost to secrecy, Bench tells him who it was. This knowledge only fuels Frost's thoughts of revenge. And in chapter 20, the response, the reader gets a bird's eye view of the rage that Frost feels. Arriving at school a bit late the next day, Frost is perplexed to see a large group of students gathered at Wolf's Locker, which is now newly painted and covered in sticky notes with, you guessed it, positive messages left by both teachers and students. Frost makes a decision to break his promise to Bench and tell the principal the truth. Much to his surprise, Be Bench has beat him to the punch. Later that day, we find out just how terrible Wolf has been bullied. Unfortunately, this constant and prolonged bullying has taken its toll and Wolf will be attending a different school. The tribe will change yet again. In the final chapter, the reader learns of the new school policies that involve both sticky notes and cell phones. The tribe gathers at Frost's house for an epic game of Dungeons and Dragons and Bench stops by to invite them to his last football game. In the end, dear reader, Frost realizes that friends, friendships change and some don't last. But in the end, you can always find your tribe. How appropriate this message is at this time when so many of us feel distant from our own tribes. I hope you enjoyed reading and learning from our one book, one school posted reboot. But dear reader, don't fret and don't leave just yet because we're not totally finished with posted. On Friday, June 5th, your morning announcements will be dedicated to an interview with the author. That's right, none other than John David Anderson. So please join us on Friday, June 5th for morning announcements to have some of your very own questions answered by our author. As this draws to a close, I'd like to say, dear reader, thank you for joining me on this journey through Posted. And that concludes our morning announcements. Remember, from start to finish, every day, we embody the warrior way. <laughs>